Hello everyone, welcome back to another art session with me. This is Marcy at Prince and Paints. Today we are going to be exploring the world of clocks and dots. So stay with me today and we will go through a full tutorial on how to create this beautiful bandella clock. This clock is made of MDF hardboard with a beautiful array of colors and the hardware is that of walnut wood. If you like what you see, please at the moment subscribe, like the video, share it, and stay tuned with me as we explore and we set time for making this beautiful mandala clock. Okay, so we're just going to jump right into this. I'm just quickly showing you that I'm using a matte lamp black shade in the Americana Deco Art. I'm putting it on my MDF hardboard. So now that I'm finished, I have a 12 inch paper that I had made and this is just going to help me find my center. You can find the center of your circle in many different ways. This is just the quickest way I'm going to do it. So I'm just going to dot this with my white color pencil, my watercolor pencil, sorry. So now I have my center dot. And then I'm gonna use my ruler. You can find this available on my Etsy as well. I will be sure to leave the link in the description. And I'm just going to get a tack and a hammer to make sure that my tack is securely in place. All I do is insert it into the hole and then I have a nice secure set on my ruler. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start drawing my grid lines out and this will be relatively quick. I will do a quick time lapse of this one. As you can see, the grid lines will be noticed as every quarter of an inch apart. And this will help so that I understand where my guidelines and my dots will be falling. So of course, now that we're making a clock, we're going to need 12 segments. So that this um, stencil that I have is 12 segments. Um, usually these come in a package when you first purchase your kits. So if you don't have that, you can use a protractor. Okay, so you want to do 90 degrees, you want to do zero, and then you're going to do basically every 30 degrees. So it would be zero, 30, 60, 90, okay? So if you don't have the template, you can use a protractor. Just make sure that you have your 12 segments lined up because these are, are the numbers that are going to be on our clocks. I'll show you demonstration real quick on how to do the protractor, okay? So again, we're doing every 30 degrees. So three o'clock, two o'clock, one o'clock, and then our 12 at the top. All right. If we use these stencil grid, we're doing the same thing basically. I'm just going to line up my ticks that I had already. And then, so I'm lining them up. So whatever you'd like to use, please do so. Just make sure that you have 12. Okay, so to speed up this process, I'm finishing up the protractor. Now I have all my lines and I can line up my ruler on the opposite ends to make my segments. You guys can always check the other video on segments. So now that we have this finished, we're gonna set it aside and I'm gonna show you the colors that we are going to be using. So we're gonna be using the Deco R Americana uh, colors and we're going to use the desert turquoise, we're going to use the metallic teal, 
we're going to be using the bright orange, primary red, cadmium yellow, splendid gold, bluegrass green, traditional burnt sienna, black pearl in the metallics, and white pearl in the metallics. So those are going to be our colors. I went ahead and I mixed all my colors together already. So with a damp cloth I already have my colors all mixed and ready to go. If you'd like to stop the video you can mix all of your colors. I'm just going to cover them up really quick so that they don't dry out. Make sure you have your 12 segments perfectly aligned on your, on your clock. We're also going to be using our uh, group of stylus. They are five stylus. So remember we have the number two on one side and then they have... Uh, we're mainly going to be using the smaller dotting tools for this project. My inspiration and idea for this in particular project was drawn from using um, Native American beading. Um, most of you are can reference it as um, applique beading, I believe it's called. Uh, the DIY mandalas. Um, I'm doing the uh, center dot is going to be uh, 22. So that will be our first dotting tool that we will use. So let's get started and paint it. We're going to use our Desert Cur Turquoise first and our number 22 dotting tool. And we are going to be dotting the center with this one. Okay, so just lightly dot the center with your large dotting tool. Uh, because it's such a large dotting tool, you're going to want to make sure that you pulsate the dot a bit and uh, add paint a couple times to it. So that's our first dot. You can put that aside, we're not going to use it anymore. Now we're going to go with our primary red and we're going to go with the size 2 dotting tool. If you have the tools that I have available, it's the white one. So I'm just encompassing the inside of that turquoise circle. So I'm just going to be dotting and I'm going to work my way around. You can do the technique where you do the north, south, east, west and do in between those. Just make sure that you have enough room to do that. I personally like to just go around in a circle to keep it simple. Okay, so I'm just going to show you real quick. Um, please be careful that they don't run into each other. Uh, unfortunately, this, this section did for me. Um, I will probably go back and fix that a little bit, but um, just be careful with that, guys, okay? So the next one we're going to do is we're going to stay with the number two, and we're going to go with our white pearl the, in the metallic. And I'm just going to follow the perimeter of the dots. So I'm just going to put dots in between the other ones. Let me zoom in for you so you can see. And I'm going to want to put the white dots in between the red ones. Okay. Hopefully your dots are um, in a nice aligned row and it will come out right for you. I did not count out these dots in any order particular. so. Okay, so now that we finished our white, we're going to zoom out and I'm going to show you the next color we're going to use is the Splendid Gold. 
we'll put away our dotting tool and we're gonna go uh, two sizes up this time so we're gonna go with the purple which is the size 4 and um, we're not gonna go in between the dots this time this technique we're just gonna go below the line where the white was and if I can zoom in I'll show you a little bit more detailed so right below the white dots you can see that we have a little bit of a line there so we're gonna dot right below that okay and then we're going to do a series of dots that go around in a circle as well. Um, and we'll just show a quick time lapse of this one, okay? Okay, so now that our gold is done, we are going to go into our metallic teal. So we'll zoom it again just to show you. Uh, we're also going to use the blue stylus, so we're going to use our size 3. What we're basically going to do with this one is, we're, let me show you, we're going, to, we're going to dot and do a swoosh around it, okay? So let me demonstrate one first. So I'm going to dip my number 3 tool in my teal. My metallic teal, sorry. So first I'm gonna I'm gonna dot the lines. Alright, so it's gonna be below the next line and on the segment line. So then in the center of that, we're going to do a dot as well. Okay. And then after we finish that all the way around, we're going to go into our gold with our number one stylus. All right, that's the smallest one you should have. We're gonna go into our gold. You just want to get a small amount on that dotting tool as well, okay? And I'm just swooping under and making like a J, okay? Um, and then I'm going to attach my next one to that. So I'm just making this simple little swoop pattern. Um, I would recommend using the smallest dotting tool you have to do this so that um, you can get that nice tapered thin line going up. If you have enough, you should be fine to do this. Um, it's the concept of doing swooshes, but you're doing it at an angle. Okay, so it's just a, we're changing up the pattern just a little bit. And we're going to do this one all the way around. So I would do your dots first and then go back through and we can make our little J swooshes. Okay, that's what we'll call them, J swooshes. Okay, so now that we've finished our really interesting, cool design, we're um, going to go into using our cadmium yellow. And we are going to use the uh, size 4 stylus. This is the purple one. Um, all I'm going to do basically is start at any of the uh, J's, J swooshes that I did. It doesn't really matter which one. I'm just going to start right below the hook part, though, of the um, J swoosh. And then I'm really just going to work my way around like I did the gold. Okay, guys, so now that we've finished our cadmium yellow dots, we're going to start the next layer. We're going to get our uh, number one dotting tool. We're going to go with the color bright orange. And basically I'm just going to dot little micro dots um, right in between the yellow dots. So it's going to go a little bit above that next line. Okay. Um, you should have enough space. If you are falling on the line, it's quite okay. Just um, 
Hopefully you're not going over it, that's all. All right. Um, and so we're just gonna go all the way around lining those dots on the line, okay? I'll do a quick time lapse just to show you them. Okay guys, so this completes our first section of our mandala clock. The second part that we're going to do is a series of, um, I'd say kind of like a flower pattern. Um, I think we'll do maybe one more row of gold, I'm not sure yet. Uh, I want to zoom out and I'm going to grab myself a little pencil and what we're going to do we're going to leave that um, we're going to leave that first part blank so the next line down we're going to start at 12 and 6 and we're going to do 3 and 9 so basically we're going to come down to, I'd say, the fourth line down. Okay, I'm going to start at the one corner and I'm going to curve down. So I'm, I'm making like a flower petal, if you can think about it. All right, I'll zoom in so you can see. If you don't feel comfortable drawing this freehand, you can find online maybe. They can have a um, like a stencil of some sort if you can find one. Um, I would not stress out about it. I would just try to do your best at practicing drawing it. Um, so I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna go to my, you know, if that's six o'clock, I'm gonna go to three o'clock. I'm basically skipping a, a full segment line in between them, okay? And again, I'm starting at the, the next line down. I'm going down to the fourth line and I'm drawing these little uh, flower petals. Okay guys, so the next portion that we're going to do is we're going to fill in our petals with a solid color. Uh, we're going to go with the desert turquoise, okay, and uh, Basically, I'm just going to fill them in. So I'm going to get my largest stylus, which is the size 5. And I'm just going to dab in and I'm going to start in the center and I'm going to, you know, basically just push the paint around um, just to fill in the areas, okay? There's you know, no uh, un necessary way of doing this you just have to fill it in um, if you want to use a brush you can I recommend um, using a stylus only because you can get a nice amount of paint to fill in that particular area um, if you do a brush you might have to do a couple coats okay All right, guys, so that finishes our beautiful uh, turquoise leaf patterns. Uh, the next portion we're going to do is um, a series of swooshes to fill in the negative spaces in between them. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to get my number nine dotting tool in the DIY. And I'm going to go back into my splendid gold. Okay. Basically, let me show you the tool I'm going to use as well. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go the third line down. 
So one, two, three, okay. It's right where the curve of the petal lands is the line. And I'm gonna dot right about the line. And this tool I have, um, it's basically a, uh, uh, it's like a, a clay tool that they use to uh, make, you know, little designs on clay. And uh, I use it to pull my swooshes. So I'll leave a link in the uh, description if you guys are interested. Um, I just started using these and I think they're really, really fantastic. Um, they help a great deal getting that fine line that you really need. So it is a little hard to use two tools, two tools <laughs> at one time, but um, you know, in the end result, you could see uh, you really get a nice swoosh out of it. So, so that's the first one. And then we're going to do uh, two more, I believe. We're going to do uh, one we're going to go on the next line, so it's going to be a little curved up, okay, your your pattern. And then I'll do one on the other side as well. And so now with these, you're just going to basically pull that up. So I'm just pulling from the center, and I'm pulling up towards that uh, side portion of the other swoosh, okay, and that is how I do that swoosh, okay, in particular. I do have a video on how to make swooshes as well, if you're interested. You can find them in my playlists. Just remember to take your time with this, guys, okay? You, you, you're, you don't need to be in a rush to do this. We are all working at our own pace with this one. All right, so those are the swooshes that we should have, okay? If you don't have the pointy tool, you can always use a, a, a smaller um, size one or even maybe a toothpick would work well too, okay? I'm gonna do the rest of them in a quick time lapse for you so you can see. Okay guys, so this is um, coming along really great. We're finished our swooshes. And uh, so the next ones we're gonna do is a series of dots, okay? We're going to do them, um, a d we're gonna do like a little series of uh, half circle uh, dotting. So I'll show you what I mean. If you have a circle template, um, I can show you what we're going to do. So basically I'm starting with an inch size circle and the second line down I'm going to line up my middle tick marks with that, okay? I'm not going to use the template for now because my paint is still wet as I'm doing this in real time. So I'm just freehanding uh, a half circle, okay? So what I'm trying to explain is that I'm just basically drawing a little half circle. I'm going from the corner of the top swooshes that I did and I'm going around to the other one, all right? And we're gonna do a couple rows of these. Basically, guys, what we're trying to mimic with this particular design is how the beads fall when they string them, okay? So drawing out my second line, um, I'm just following the first curve that I made, and I'm really only doing about a, not even a quarter of an inch spaced apart, maybe about an eighth of an inch. There's not much space to them, okay? If you can understand, like when you're wearing those layers of necklaces and they're cascading on while you wear it and they just kind of fall, you know, one after another, that's kind of what we're um, mimicking in this particular part. 
So I basically did uh, four, four lines, okay? Four strings of beads. So we're gonna do blue. We're gonna do uh, blue grass green. We're gonna do orange and red. And maybe do one more color, I'm not sure yet, okay? So, yeah, we might do one more color. Sorry guys, I'm just trying to draw this out as I go. We're also going to do some dots at the end of the um, petals as well. Okay, so if you have your pencil still in your hand, draw a little circle at the end so we know. Okay. This is me just sketching out an idea as we go, okay. So we're going to get our bluegrass green out. Oh wait, I'm sorry, we're gonna get our uh, metallic blue out. Okay, so our metallic teal first. We're also going to use the bluegrass green. We're going to use the bright orange. Primary red. And the traditional bird sienna. Those are the colors we'll use for these uh, string of bee-like dots. We might use splendid gold at the end. Okay, so make sure you have these colors available for. I know it's a lot to remember guys. We're gonna go step by step though, okay? In the meantime, get out your smallest uh, dotting stylus. So get your size one out. And we're going to go into our uh, metallic teal. Now remember, uh, if your paints are starting to get a little tacky, you might want to add some fluid to them, all right? Or if you're using wa a little bit of water and, uh, you know, just refreshing your paints up as we go. I'm just going to start at one particular quarter and I'm going to work my way to the other side. All right, I'm not going to start in the center and work my way out. If you want to do that, please go ahead. There's no uh, right way to do that. I'm just going to zoom in a little so you can see. And uh, I'm just basically dotting right next to each other. I'm just kind of following that curve of the line that I drew out, okay? I'm also painting right on the line, if you notice. I'm not painting under it or up above it. As you go along, I would um, personally uh, just, you know, do a few dots and then stand back and see if they're aligning properly, okay? Because sometimes if you're really close and you're dotting and you look back, it's crooked. So just make sure that they're falling in a nice even curve. That's why I was recommending using the circle template if you have one, you know, otherwise you would just have to, you know, make sure all your paint is fully dry before you lay that down. All right, so now I'm gonna flip it around and do my number two, or you could use your white one. Just, um, we're just using size two. So with that, we're gonna go into our blue grass green color and basically we're doing the same concept, guys, okay? So, and I'm just making this one a little bit larger just because sometimes when you're doing beadwork, you have larger beads than others or you have the same size. Um, I just wanted to make these a little bit larger. And, you know, Obviously, just remember that your paint consistency is, you know, not too thin because your, your, your dots are going to start running together. When I'm doing little dots like this, I do tend to just use it straight out of the bottle. So I find that the consistency is just right when you do that. 
Oh, see, one of my dots ran into each other. Now hold on, I'm going to clean that off and come back to you guys. Okay guys, sorry, we're back. Um, I just wanted to make sure that that wasn't um, on my mandala. It was kind of messy, so I'm just going to keep moving forward. Remember, everybody makes mistakes, so you guys have to, you know, obviously stop when you need to and clean them up and uh, just keep going. Alright. Okay, so now that we're finished with our bluegrass green, uh, we're going to go with, I believe, our, our bright orange. Yes. So our bright orange. I'm also going to go with the same size, so I'm going to stay with the size 2. And again, I'm going to just dot on that line that I drew. If you find that your lines are a little bit closer together than you can expect them to have the dots line up, then, you know, use your own judgment, obviously. So you might have to pull your dots down a little lower than the line you had. Okay guys, so we're going to stay with the same exact size that we had and this time we're just going to go right into our primary red and after that we're going to follow it with our traditional burnt sienna. So just follow the same concept that you did and um, we'll see you when you're finished. Okay guys, I'm back and um, I did decide to just do the, uh, the rest of them. There should be three more that you need to do in that same concept. Uh, the time lapse would be way too long for me, so obviously pause the video if you need to, catch up, and then um, we'll start the next section, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so jumping right into it, we're going to grab our number five dotting tool, and we're going to use our metallic white pearl, and I'm just dotting those little circles that we drew out prior and I'm just going to be finishing up the tips of the uh, turquoise petals with a dot. Alright. So now with the number four dotting tool we're going to use our gold and I'm just following the curve of our turquoise petal. I'm going to do at the top portion, not so much the bottom, and I'm going to cascade down, just like I'm doing the walking dots in the other shape petal. So zooming in, you can see I'm going to start at that corner and work my way down, okay? Just like that, and we'll do that for each one. Okay guys, so now that the gold is finished and before we get too far into our mandala, now that our turquoise should be fairly dry, uh, I'm just going to use a number two dotting tool. I just flipped around the one I had and because the turquoise was a flat color, it was in a metallic shine, I'm going to use the metallic teal and I'm just basically following the top portion there with uh, a row of number two dots just to give it some accent, just to give it a little bit more depth to it. Okay. It's a little bit flat right now and it needs a little bit something, so. So that's what it'll look like, okay? So I'm gonna do that for all four of them, okay? All right, so the next step that we are gonna do is a series of gold dots. I'm gonna use my number four dotting tool and the next available line that's below, I'm just gonna start doing uh, a series of gold dots, okay? We're gonna work all the way around with that one. This is just gonna kinda tie in this um, design in the center, okay?
So uh, we're just going to repeat the same process. We're just going to do a smaller dotting tool and a different color. So I'm going to go with the size 2 dotting tool and I'm going to go into my primary red this time. And uh, let me zoom in so I can see. Uh, I'd say like right below the, the line that the gold dots fell on we're going to do a dot of red just like that and then we're just going to follow that all the way around as well. Okay guys? Just make sure you give them enough space so that they don't bleed into each other. All right, so uh, I think with the next portion we're going to work on, we're going to change up our designs. And I think we're going to do a series of swooshes. All right, so get your swooshy hand out <laughs> and um, we're going to get a number two stylus. And I think what we're going to do is go with our um, brown sienna. I think we're going to go with the traditional brown sienna. And I'm just going to start with the uh, next available space. So the next, um, you know, where the line comes down, all right, where my finger's pointing to, I think we're going to use that portion to do a swoosh. And let me show you what I mean. So I'm just going to dot. I'm going to dot on the, one of the segment lines so I can get myself started. And then I'm just going to dot and pull up. Okay, so zooming in to show you, I'm only going to dot there and go up to the next line. So it's going to be a quarter of an inch size swoosh. And then I'm just going to go right next to it in the same direction. All right, so I'm only giving myself a small amount of space. And I'm going to do a swoosh like that all the way around. All right, and then we'll come back and we'll do the next portion. Okay guys, so now that we finished our swooshes, we're um, going to start a new design element. This part's going to be fun because it's going to be more of the petals and these petals now are going to act as a placement for our numbers for our clocks. Alright, so again, grab your pencils and we are going to just basically sketch out really quickly. Uh, the petals. So I want to show you something real quick before I start drawing my petals out, okay? I want to show you the hardware that we're doing our um, clocks with, okay? So this is the kit I will have available if you want to purchase it. You can always use uh, anything you have on hand or what you want to buy but the kit that I have bought is uh, four sets of um, wooden numbers and hands okay uh, they are made of walnut which is fabulous and uh, they're pretty durable um, you have to do be careful with them but uh, they are pretty nicely done so so to show you real quick, this is your minute hand, your second hand, and then your hour hand. So you should have three each, okay? So 
So obviously you could check the, the hour hand is much smaller than the minute hand and then the uh, second hand is the largest. Um, the numbers are really cool. They're uh, about like burned etches on the outside of them and then like a natural wood. I'm going to leave them as is. If you'd like to paint them, you can go ahead. Um, I just wanted to show you the kit that I had received though of what we're going to be using for this particular project. I want to get my numbers out though before I start drawing my petals because I want to make sure that my numbers are going to fit in my petals. So, you know, like obviously, for example, uh, 11 and 10 and 12 are double numbers. So they're going to be a little bit larger and want to be able to fit in that petal. All right. Because um, that's important. You, you want to think about those things before we start just painting. So going back to our mandala, we're going to get our pencil out and I'm going to get all my numbers out. All right, again, I'm gonna get my 12, I'm gonna lay them out and make sure that I have enough space for them. I'm gonna take my segments now and make sure that they're lined up. I'm going to put 12 at the top, obviously six at the bottom. All right, if you notice, that's how I'm going to be laying them out. So just keep in mind, you know, I'm also lining it up with the petals on the inside. Remember that. Otherwise, they might be lined up with the swooshes. See? So make sure that your point of your inner portion of your petals are lining up with your 12. So it looks like my numbers kind of go back. Uh, they go past like the sixth or fifth line. All right, and I'm just gonna curve around them so I can see exactly where the petal is going to be placed. All right. And then on the other side, I'm gonna do the same thing. So roughly sketch this out, guys, okay? You know, when I'm ready to paint them, I can go back and fix them. So right now, we're just sketching. And then obviously you see each segment is going to be for a different number, all right? So we're gonna be on that, that line. They're also gonna be a bit staggered, right? So, you know, you don't want them to be straight on that line. They're gonna be kind of at an angle. So I'm really just going to be uh, laying these out for now so I can see how they look. And remember, I'm just using the next line that I have available as uh, my starting point. Okay, this way that they're all, um, there's, there's a nice negative space between that swoosh and your end of your number there. And for now, I'm just putting the three and nine. Obviously, I'm, I'm probably going to move them out just a bit more um, so that they're lined up because you could see that nine is a little bit in more than 10. So this is where like your eye can just come in and, and you know, see how it looks. For now, I'm just gonna be lining them up. Okay, so now that I've gotten my numbers where I want them to be, I'm just going to quickly sketch out the same concept that we did in the center with drawing out those petals, okay? So I would leave the numbers where they are and just sketch around. If you need to move your mandala around, please do that, okay? It'll be easier for you. And like I said, just sketch around your numbers to make a uh, nice petal. Okay guys, so we got our uh, leaf petals all drawn out. This is coming together and it's finally starting to look like a clock. Yay! 
So this is looking really cool. Uh, what you want to do now is you want to get your number five dotting tool or whatever dotting tool or brush you want to use and we're going to take our numbers off. I would leave a little tick mark where you know your 12 is going to be set. Uh, you can even write it above it in the in the pencil just so you remember obviously because you could get confused and then just start painting away use the turquoise uh, desert turquoise and fill in those petals with the turquoise blue again and uh, we'll see you back here okay Okay, so we finished our petals. Um, mine did take a day to dry, so obviously this is going to be a process, guys, that we are going to be working with. So uh, when we're finished with our dried petals, we are um, going to want to do the metallic dots as well. But in the meantime, I'm going to do that afterwards and I'm going to put my numbers on. All right. Remember that your petals are lined up. If you didn't write your number 12 already, you should be able to know where they fit properly. And then just try to, um, you know, try to keep them lined up with your segment lines where you can see them poking through and make sure that you're lining those numbers up again. And then we're just gonna add our numbers. You just want to make sure that they look nice and centered. Obviously three is going to be the furthest out and then four and five will go in and six, etc. Okay. So now what I'm going to use is um, the Gorilla Glue. This is the clear glue. Um, this dries clear. It's really easy to use and it dries pretty fast. I'd say in about 15 minutes it sets and then about, I'd say, two hours, it would be fully dry. So this is the kind of glue that I use to hang most of my mandalas with as well. Um, I definitely uh, recommend it. So what I do is I just get an old dotting tool and I dip the dotting tool into the glue and I just spread it on the back of my number. You don't need much because it can glob out and then you have a mess and you will see the glue. So you just want to do a little bit of glue, not much. So I'm just going to show you a time lapse of me gluing my numbers and then um, if you have trouble with it just reach out to me. If you don't know, you know, I'll make sure I put the link in the description for the glue as well, okay? All right, so the numbers are glued down and uh, we're ready to do the next portion. So I have um, these paint markers, okay? This is the color gold. It's an extra fine tip point and it's from the brand name Artistro. Uh, if you wanna use splendid gold and a smaller stylus, please, by all means, you can. I just find it easier to do this portion with a marker pen, okay? Um, I'll be sure to leave the link in the description as well for these types of pens, if you like, to use them. 
and all I'm doing is just outlining each petal in my gold. I'm starting from the center point and working my way out. This way if there's some excess paint it's okay to be thicker on the inside than the outside. And I'm just going to trace every portion of these, okay? Alright guys, so now that we've finished our petals, we have our gold outlines. Uh, we're going to focus on doing um, our in between our petals, okay? So we're going to mimic the pattern that's in the center in between each petal. Um, I'm going to do a smaller, suit, uh, smaller swoosh in the trio set. I'm going to use the splendid gold again. And this time I'm going to go with um, a size do six dotting tool in the DIY, okay? And I think I'm just going to basically come down to about the second line. Let me see if I can show you. So I'm going to go to the second line. All right, they're going to be really tiny, only because we need to do the... Um, the color dots as well, okay? And because we're getting towards the end, we want to shrink this portion down a bit. So I'm just going to do one in the center like that, and I'm dotting in the center of the line this time. And then I'm going to go above the line. Okay, so we're basically making our Mickey ears. That's what I call those, the Mickey Mouse ears. And then I'm going to get my long tip stylus here and I'm going to pull those up. Or you could use a size one or a toothpick, whatever you can get. And then I'm just going to center that portion and I'm going to pull up. And then I, at an angle I gradually pull from each side and pull towards the center. That's how I do my swooshes. And then again on the uh, ones next to it, you're just going to pull from the center and I'm going to start curving it up. And then I fill in anything that's around that. Okay. So I fill in that portion and I fill a little bit on the other side as well. Not much. Just to make it a, a smooth uh, curve to it. So that's all you're going to do for that one, okay? So we're going to do a swoosh for every single spot.
All right, so our swooshes are finished, guys. They go all around. That helps fill in that little negative space that we have there. And again, we're gonna get our pencil and I'm just gonna quickly sketch out one small curve, okay? I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it before we move forward. So I'm using the first line as my baseline. That's where my curve wants to kind of fall on. Okay, do you see how it's just falling on there? All right, and then the next one's just gonna mimic the same thing, all right? So we're gonna do bluegrass green for that one. And then uh, we're gonna do red. And so I'm just following that curve when I'm drawing them out. All right. And then again, so that's three. If you feel comfortable just eyeballing it and not drawing it out, that's fine too. Um, I like to draw things out just so I can understand it. I think we'll do the the uh, the the teal after that, and then so we're gonna have four rows of um, the dots. So so yeah, where where the points kind of finish there on that second from last line is where our um, our rows are going to fall and that's just where they're going to stop right there okay guys yep so you should have two more lines left for the entire thing so the first one I'm going to do the size one and I'm going to go into my bluegrass green and again I'm just going to dot on one side and work to the other side So I'm just starting one side and working my way around. And they're just dotted close enough to where they don't mix into each other at this point, okay? So that's the first row. All right, so we'll do that for every single one. And then we're gonna go into the number two, so just flip your dotting tool around. So I think uh, with this one, instead of the red, we're gonna do our orange. Okay, the bright orange. And so that one, we're just gonna do our, our size two. Okay, so that's finished. And then with the same size, I'm gonna go into my metallic teal this time. We'll add a little bit of shine to it. The same row, so we're gonna go around. And again, the main objective is to just make sure that you're your row and your half circle, um, you know, is a string of beads is falling naturally and has a nice curve to it. Okay. Okay, so that's our teal. And then our last color. So the same size again, number two. And we're going to go into our yellow, our cadmium yellow.
Alright, and so that's complete guys. So each one of these, where your swooshes are, are going to have these same color beads, okay? So stop your camera, do all of these, and I'll meet you back here, okay guys? Okay guys, so I did not do a time lapse of the last part of those stringy beads that I did. Uh, it just would have took too long. So once you finish, this should be your finished result of that portion of it. Um, I think we're gonna do a few more dots to enclose it and make a border. Um, and then we'll get into doing our drilling our holes. If you have noticed above where the numbers are, I did do a portion of a number one dotting with the uh, metallic teal as well, just to mimic the other ones. Um, for the outer rimmer, I'm, part of it, I'm going to do uh, pearl white and I'm gonna do maybe uh, the primary red and also a gold. So I'm just gonna do a series of rows, just like the ones I'm pointing at right now. I'm going to do uh, the white first and I'm going to use the number one stylist for this part. Um, and I'm just gonna basically dot on the next line available. So that's a little bit below where your yellow, uh, cadmium yellow row of dots fell, and also like where the tip of your petal is pointing towards. All right, so if you can see, that's where I'm going to start my series of dots, and I'm gonna work my way around using the number one stylus. After I do that, I'm going to go back and I'm going to flip this stylus around and go with the nut size number two. And I'm going to go into my red and right below where the white dots fall, I'm going to do the red dots. Okay. I'll show you real quick where they should be placed. And then those will also be a series of rows of red dots all the way around. Okay. Um, and then I think uh, the last portion I'm going to do the uh, splendid gold around the perimeter which would be like your last line that you have available uh, so let me clean off my dotting tool I'll show you real quick um, I'm going to use the size 4 this time dotting tool the, the, we're going to use the purple one okay and uh, we're gonna dot right below the last line, just to give a little bit of negative space in between that, to break up the red and white with the gold. All right, so we'll do that all the way around, guys, okay? And then that will complete our uh, full painting, all right? And then we can get into uh, adding the hardware and drilling the holes, so. I'll do a quick time lapse and I'll meet you back here, guys, okay? Okay, guys, so we're moving right into this. Um, I cut out the time lapse just to make my video a little shorter, but you should be done, guys. We did it. Um, I'm so glad and happy if you stuck with me through this whole thing. I cannot express my appreciation for that. Um, but this should be your completed Mandela. Um, so. Now we want to get our hardware out, guys, okay? So uh, I prefer to use a handheld drill for this because uh, a drill press may not be so forgiving when you're trying to drill through the center of it, all right? You have more control over a handheld drill. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, uh, get your drill bit out, all right? This is the size 3 16 um, I might go up a little bit higher and might do a 5 16 okay? Just to make sure that my, uh, you know, clock portion of it fits in. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable doing it yourself and drilling this, find someone that can do it for you, please. Um, but, you know, we could do it. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, so try your best. If you have any questions, please reach out to me in the comments below. Um, you just have to make sure that your drill bit, when you drill through, is going to fit 
that uh, part of your hardware, okay? Um, so your choice, you want to get out of second hand, you want to get an hour and a minute hand, okay, out of your packaging. So when we come back, I'll show you how to put it together, okay? So I'm back. Now, uh, the hand drill I did do, so this is the hole that I have. I went from the back to the front when I did this, and I kind of had to, you know, get an exacto knife, and I had to shave off parts of the back of it because it does push out, okay? So I would go from either end and then, uh, you know, drill it through and then cut off any portions that were pushed out. All right. Um, please remember to clean up your lines as well when you're finished painting. It's super important. I don't want you to seal it in and then, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to see you messing up. So... Uh, make sure when you, s you finish painting, clean up your lines, okay? And then go back through, put a finish on. Um, and then, uh, just to protect it, I'm going to probably brush on my varnish at this point. I like to use a matte finish. You can use high gloss. Uh, it depends on what you prefer to do, so... Uh, so remember guys clear up the lines put on your varnish let it dry uh, probably a day or so and then uh, I would go through and uh, make sure everything's nice and clean now you can see I have my varnish on and it has dried it has a bit of a sheen and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the back of my hardware into uh, behind my clock so it's going to go behind it I'm going to put a rubber uh, it's like a uh, protective cover that I have right there that's gonna go on first as well it's kind of acts as a washer and then you will uh, you can follow the instructions obviously that they gave you in the package and basically it's just putting that through putting a washer on, putting a bolt on, and then from there you can pop on your um, your hands, okay? I believe the hour hand goes first, then the second hand, or no, then the minute hand, then the second hand, okay? The instructions are very clear. You can, it's very easy to understand. So if you buy this kit, obviously just please follow it and then you'll be fine. There's my washer I have, so that will go on first. And then I will get my my bolt that is also supplied. It might take some wiggle room and, and, you know, to put it on. That's the bolt that you get. You put that on. And you just want to twist it tight enough so that the uh, back portion doesn't move around. I did use a, uh, a little bit of pliers and to hold it so that I could get that around. And you just want to make sure that it's lined up, okay? When you do put your hands on, you want to make sure they're all pointing towards the 12. All right. The bolts can be tricky, guys, so be patient with it. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to get out our wooden hands. Okay, so there is the hour hand. It's going to point towards the 12 mark. So I will slip that on just so it's nice and snug. You don't have to force it on because you can break it. All right. 
So just so it pops a little bit. All right. And now you're going to get your minute hand, which is slightly longer. We're going to do the same thing. Now this one is going to pop inside of the uh, hardware that you have, the back portion of it. That's going to rest on there. And then the second hand will kind of enclose it all together. You should be able to hear a bit of a snap when you put on the second hand. There's our second hand is the skinniest and longest piece. It also has that nice cover to the top of it. It acts as like a, you know, like a cap. These can get a bit tricky. I had a little trouble trying to do this on camera just so you could see it. But there we go. We hear a nice little click pop and there you go. And now you can go from the back and you can set your time, pop in your battery and you'll be ready to go, okay? The back portion, um, you can do a series of sawtooth uh, hangers, you can do wire hangers. They do come equipped with a small, um, it's like an L-shaped bracket type of hook, and I basically just used that Gorilla Glue that I had, and I glued on the back portion of that to my mandala, okay? That's what I used for this portion, and it held up really nicely. So I would just suggest maybe getting some bubble wrap or a cloth when you flip it around and want to make sure that it stayed and don't have your battery in, so otherwise your clock will be ticking and getting all bunched up inside of that. So, um, But that's it, guys. We finished. Uh, uh, please subscribe, guys. Like my video, and... Uh, I can't wait to make the next project and share it with you and uh, have a great day and happy dotting guys. Take care. Bye.